We probably all spend a lot of time internally in our organizations and even externally talking about the implications of viewability and what it means to us. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. <clears throat> Uh, the IPG Media Lab partnered with two organizations in order to answer a couple really big questions. <clears throat> we partnered with uh, Cadreon, which is our programmatic buying group. We also partnered with uh, Integral Ad Science, which of course is a leader in viewability measurement. And we wanted to again answer two kind of major questions. The first question was about really understanding what value you get out of ads that meet the MRC standard. And then secondly, what exactly is the nature of that relationship between viewability and ad effectiveness? And so from our perspective, it was really important for us to test things out scientifically. We wanted to make sure that any differences that we see in ad effectiveness are 100% attributed to different levels of viewability. So we conducted what we call um, an online lab experiment where we control for everything. Um, and so we recruited close to 10,000 people from a representative online panel sample. We started out by asking them some kind of basic questions about who they are and the typical websites they tend to visit. We then directed them to a website based on their media consumption habits and uh, completely controlled the ad experience on that web page. We had about 189, not about, exactly 189 ad scenarios. The reason we had so many is because we really wanted to answer a lot of questions. I know I mentioned two kind of overarching questions, but we wanted to test at almost every level of viewability. We wanted to test across major industry verticals. Uh, we wanted to answer some creative questions, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. And then we also wanted to test across um, the major forms of digital advertising. So uh, rich media, standard banner ads, and of course video. So they viewed the web page. We actually did have a subset of users who turned on their webcam so that we could track their eye fixations as they viewed the page. We really also wanted to get a good understanding of consumer attention and how many people actually see ads based on different levels of viewability. After they viewed the web page, they simply answered some questions about uh, the ad experience. They answered some questions about the brand, typical branding metrics that we're all used to. So actually, I guess there's no back button on this, but that's okay, I can handle it. Um, so I'm gonna point out before I pull up any data that um, there are a couple slides that I've uh, grouped standard banner ads with video because I think it's important for us to see the, the overall impact versus the, the impact for video specifically, and this is one of those slides. The first thing that I uh, wanna point out with respect to our learnings though is that the MRC standard turns out shocker is not some magical threshold for ad effectiveness. It's not that as soon as your ad uh, meets the bare minimum MRC standard is, you know, it's all of a sudden going to have this great impact and um, it's going to be suddenly effective. In fact, when we looked at ads that simply met the bare minimum standard, um, they actually didn't have any impact at all. Nobody really recalled them. That's the 2% down there. There's no statistical change in ad recall. So the next question we had to ask ourselves is, uh, was our creative just bad? Because as we know, all creative is different. Some ads just don't work because it's not good creative. And the answer to that was no. We tested creative that was effective because if we, we looked at the impressions that were above the MRC standard, um, we found impact. People recalled them. That's the 17% up there. For video, we found very similar results, in fact, almost the same. No impact at the bare minimum MRC level. So just meeting the MRC standard is not enough to break through. Um, but again, the ads were very effective. In fact, the only difference between this slide and the previous slide is that video ads are more effective, and we all know that. That's why we are at Videonomics and not Bannernomics. Um, so, so anyway, what does that mean? Are we concerned about this 2%, this no impact at the basic MRC level? Well, from our perspective, we're not really too worried about that because we have to go back to what the MRC based their standards on. Um, and the research that they released was that a pretty big proportion, or at least impressions that meet that bare minimum standard have a really good chance of actually becoming 100% in view. So that 2% that you think back to, 
um, doesn't really represent a lot of impressions in real life. Now, I did reach out to the MRC standard because this data, or sorry, the MRC, because this data um, specifically represents uh, what they see for standard display and rich media. It doesn't necessarily uh, represent video. And unfortunately, they don't, they don't have any data on that, but the thought or the implication is that um, the chances would be even greater for video. So we're not super worried about that. Um, the second learning was that the MRC standard does, however, serve as a stepping stone to ad effectiveness. So while it's not the be all end all, and it's not, you know, as soon as you reach this level, you're gonna have impact, um, we did see a strong relationship between viewability and ad effectiveness. So as viewability increases, so does ad effectiveness, which I think is just a nice sigh of relief. <laughs> um, here we have the results specifically for video and we see the same thing except a much sharper curve up, which again is related to the fact that video ads are more effective than other forms of digital. Another very important insight I think on this slide is that one of the dimensions related to the MRC standards and what viewability is and means is much more important than the other. And I think you can obviously see which one that is, that's the line going straight up, which is time and view. So it's much more important that your ad is in view for a longer period of time than it is the actual number of pixels that are on the page. So we also took a look, of course, at impressions below the MRC standard. And really, it shouldn't surprise us that there are some impressions below the MRC standard that actually do have impact. Um, I say it shouldn't surprise us because there's not a perfect correlation between ad effectiveness and viewability. So surely there are some impressions below that have some sort of impact. However, when my team broke this data out, we actually were very surprised. We were surprised to see a 9% um, increase in recall when we don't really see that at the MRC standard, bare minimum level. Um, and so it was surprising to us for about five minutes until we broke it out further and saw exactly where that was coming from. And that's, you know, it really all goes back to the fact that the MRC standard is based on two dimensions, time in view and percent in view. So technically there can be impressions that um, are, you know, don't have many pixels in view. For example, 49% are in view. They don't meet the 50% standard or, you know, even lower, 30%, um, 40%. Um, but they're in view for a longer period of time. So therefore they do actually have a big impact. So meeting one requirement but not the other, or especially in situations where one requirement is exceeded and the other one is not met. So again, because there are two dimensions associated with the MRC standards, there are some impressions that uh, have great impact below the standard. Now, how big of a deal is this? You know, how worried are we about this? Well, um, we don't really know. We don't have, you know, the MRC didn't release data based on every single level of viewability. So we're partnering right now with Integral Ad Science to figure this out. How many impressions actually exist at these important levels below the standard in the wild? So more on that soon. Not today, but soon. <laughs> I wanna leave you with one last data point, and that is basically putting the MRC standard next to what we found for audio on video. So obviously the MRC standard for video is 50% in view for two seconds. And the first level at which we found impact was actually at 25% in view for two seconds. So we actually found some impact for the ads that we tested, and we tested a lot of different ads. Um, you're not gonna get the same thing with every ad, of course, but for all of the ads that we tested, the average impact was achieved at 25% for two seconds. Now that doesn't mean that's the biggest impact you're gonna get, of course that's not true. It just means that we do see some meaningful impact um, at this level. And so what does all of this mean? Um, well, I think first of all, again, it's really nice to know that viewability is positively correlated with viewability. Um, it's also very interesting and, and important for us to know which of those viewability dimensions is more important than the other. Um, percent in view, I'm sorry, time in view rather is much more important than percent in view. That can actually have an impact on where we place our ads. And then finally, I would say that uh, viewability really should not be considered 
the be all end all. Um, it's not something that should be considered a success metric. Yes, it's important, very important to track and keep accountability with respect to viewability. Um, but again, it's not the success metric that we should be focused on. We should, of course, keep in mind and focus on what our original KPIs were. Now, we do have some uh, additional insights coming out soon because, of course, I couldn't cover off on 189 test scenarios in 10 minutes and a handful of slides. So um, we do have a full set of nuanced insights coming out soon. Um, we will be diving deeper into each of the ad formats. So we'll have more on video and what works and what doesn't work. Uh, we'll be looking at the eye tracking data to see how uh, you know, consumer attention correlates with viewability, how many people are actually seeing the ads. And then most interestingly, I think, we're gonna see how advertisers can actually control viewability uh, and really have an impact, a bigger impact rather, um, at levels lower levels of viewability. So we're gonna be looking at things like contextual ad placement as it relates to viewability, share of voice, logo placement, audio on versus audio off. So more on that soon, so please uh, feel free to reach out if you guys are interested in the topic. Um, I'll also say that next week we are kicking off a study where we will be looking at um, in-feed um, autoplay video and the amount of time it takes for those types of videos to have impact. And so I bring that up because I've heard quite a few people talking about that over the last day or so. So anyway, thank you guys. I appreciate it. And feel free to reach out. All right.